freaking mouse go? Damn it. I got everything backwards. Yes. Welcome back to Cover to Cover tonight. The Distillers. Sing Sing Death House. Good evening. Uh, we are absent. Hi, Leah, tonight. He wasn't feeling well. I think I got the black lung. We miss you, um, buddy. Yes, he's he, he will be greatly missed. Um, I don't know if this is repercussions from uh, the other night or or not, but I uh, I hope he I hope he gets about well. I told him to get some rest. So, uh, distillers. is a band that I had heard of previously, but I had never heard anything by them except for uh, probably City of Angels. Yeah, that song's pretty popular. And maybe Seneca Falls. Um, I played I played a little bit of Tony Hawk back in the day, but... Yeah. Um, uh, this is the... This is... Pro Skater 4, yes. Yeah, that's probably my um, favorite. But I was talking about it with my uh, with my coworker. He's a little younger, um, and uh, he had brought Pro Skater 4 up, um, and he said he ended up he ended up downloading a bunch of distillers on on the, on Spotify or, or however he, however he said it um, after that, um, but. Uh, I told him I really never heard heard any of their stuff, but after giving this a lesson, I was like, "Wow, this is this is great." What's up, Perry? Yeah, I actually, I actually bought this album around the time it came out, and so I don't it. remember I don't remember how or the scenario. More than likely, I might have seen the. The Crazed Young Peeling video. Or the Young Crazed Peeling, yeah. I think I saw that video on MTV or something, maybe. I don't know. Or I picked up a magazine. But I'm not sure I'm not sure exactly how I how I, but I did get this album in two thousand two or early two thousand three. Um I I was able to track down the uh the dvd it was uh had the two music videos and then it had uh like some of the mtv uh like interview or something it, it's okay like here i linked and on the back it actually has all the tour dates that they were on tour with no doubt and garbage that that year very nice so it's like a like a promo piece right I don't remember how I got this, if it came in a magazine or or what, but I I got this in like 2002 or three also. Yeah, once I saw that first video though of Brody, man, I fell in love with her and like I love the sound, everything. Yeah, that's that's kind of I have I have a soft spot for for. Uh, female leads, and the the raw, the more raw and gritty the voice. That's exactly how I am. I mentioned it in the past. Yeah, I love it. You know the Joan Jet. Yes, you know, I love Joan Jet for her voice. Brody has that same style. You know, she sounds a lot like Courtney Love too. That, yeah, that that was one. yeah. In one of the interviews, I was, that was like one of her main influences it was Courtney Love and Discharge. And I even went back last week and gave uh, one of the whole albums a listen to while at work. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of similarities there. But I think Brody is superior over Courtney. I I, I agree. Big um, time. And I'm not just saying that because I I'm a, a Courtney Love. Hater, 
but uh, she, I think she, maybe they, they may have had some similar experiences uh, as, as youth, but um, I, she, as far as writing, the stuff that the stuff that Brody was writing and and the way she presented the music um, is you, you you said it far superior than 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 Courtney Love. I just I can't get past the uh, I can't get past Courtney Love. I, I don't I don't yeah. I never also, did like her. Also, there's a new chick that to me kind of. She's on Hellcat, obviously, but from the Interrupters. Amy, I think her name's Amy from the Interrupters. Okay. When she when she has that certain time when she ain't like singing, singing, she sounds a lot like Brody, also. Yeah. Um. That uh, podcast uh, had mentioned, I can't remember the name of the band, um, but they had mentioned a, a a singer by the name of Bree. I don't know what band she's from, but they they had played some stuff where they had touched on on some of her similarities uh, vocally with with Brody. Um, uh, but that that was another. Um, they had compared uh, Brody to, to to Courtney on that on that podcast, and I I put the link in the description below if you care to uh, take a look at it um if you're a huge fan of tim armstrong from rancid um i don't know if i'd recommend it because it did not show <laughs> him in a positive light um, yeah they trashed did, him a lot i did which I is did learn, I, I did learn a lot about some of the stuff that went on um uh, prior to that i didn't know um well i knew that she had been married to to tim um but I didn't know that after after that marriage, that she had been married to Josh Home and and uh, and some of the the fallout uh, involved there. Um, but yeah, it seemed like it was a rocky, rocky. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you want to get that deep into it, but. It, it didn't seem like a healthy marriage. No, not no, really. No, no. I heard no. something that, like, after she divorced and she was still with distillers for, like, a year or two after, um, Tim, like, blacklisted the band and, like, yeah. get any yeah. shit news. Well, it, basically just till the band just fell apart because they couldn't play anywhere, so. Yeah. And in my opinion, that's, 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 the end the 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 podcast sh shows him in a negative light but if that is how he if it, uh, that is how he acted then maybe he should be shown in a negative light um it doesn't take away what he's done in in rancid and, and what he's done uh, elsewhere but he's still a t very talented musician but right a dick is a dick so <laughs> yeah um uh, again i don't and I think a lot of people don't want to look at it, look at it because a lot of people like them. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I think that's the fans way of just kind of brushing it under the rug and keeping it covered up because it's like a dirty little secret. You know, yeah, yeah. How they, you know, how they got together and all the stuff, you know, during and after. It's something I guess the fans just don't want to talk about. Yeah. Which, I mean, I don't blame them, but at the same time, you know. Well, and they had even brought it, brought it up in that that um, about the the female fans were, I guess, aware of, of certain things, but the the, the male fans are, are always just you know taken aback, and shocked, you know, by yeah. by any of that information because they they don't expect it, um, and that's the case with really anybody that you know, and and the 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 age of the internet and and so forth it's it's more accessible yeah um, definitely not as accessible as it was uh, back then yeah. as it is now but um but yeah um yeah uh female female leads are gritty gritty vocals i wanted to, i wanted to bring that up as just a a, a supplemental thing uh for me i, I just I, I love it 
Um, there used to be a black metal band called Opera Opera Nine, and they had they had a, a female lead singer, and like she could she could switch her voice back and forth just like on a dime, and it was just amazing. Um, and I I uh, I guess uh, all inspiring is 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 the word for me. Um, but, uh, I guess let's get into the, if I can get, get my, uh, this is, um, the Stiller's second album it was released in, on January 29th, 2002. Uh, so it just had a, a 20, 20th anniversary last year, um, on Hellcat Records. Uh, which uh, again we, we had previously discussed was uh, um, the the label set forth by by Tim Armstrong and, and company. Yeah, um, which it stung for him a lot because the Steelers leaving his label, which other than Rancid, I I think they were like the biggest band on there. The big and yeah, yeah w- once they left, <clears throat> like the beginning of the end of the label. Right. Which I mean, it's still around, but it's not to me. There's like five bands on it. Yeah, to me, it's not as popular as it was in the early 2000s. No, it was it was a force we recognized. I mean, they band. had like a lot of bands I love. They had you know U.S. Bombs. Joe Strummer was on. Joe it. Strummer. I mean, Roger Merritt and the Disasters. A lot of good stuff. But it's it, as an indie label, it's it's we see stuff like that all the time. It's, they, they come and go. Um, some of them stick around longer than others. Um, but uh, um, it was recorded in April of 2001. Um, West Beach Recorders in Hollywood. That's not a f- studio that I'm familiar with. Uh, I'm assuming it's it's a, a low-key uh, indie-type studio. Um, and... This one clocks in. This may be the shortest record we've done so far. Uh, yeah, clocks in. It's 28 minutes and 43 seconds. It, uh, it's, it's, it's right in there with uh, Rain and Blood. Um, yeah. Those 28-minute records, um, which is, is unbelievable considering it has 12 tracks on it. <laughs> Uh, and it was it was produced by the band by the band themselves, um, mixed by Brett, Brett Gerwitz. Uh, I remember hearing they had to do a lot of the producing themselves because the producer they got for to actually do the thing, like in the middle of making the record, he just went on like a crack binge. And so like, okay, well you can't be like doing all this while you're trying to make a record. So they basically just had to do it all themselves because he was on crack the entire time. <laughs> literally, literally that's see that's the that's the kind of stuff that i had trouble uh trying to find i could i there's, there's not so a huge little. amount of information and bringing up that that podcast again uh, we were talking about sage um i was about 40 45 minutes into the podcast before they even brought up the album and the podcast was titled, you know, Sing Sing Death House. The first people I should do a, a natural video on the album. It's it's that's very possible. Um, you can't find anything. There's a couple. There's at least one review video I saw, but I didn't watch it. I didn't want it to influence influence my my uh, idea of this album. Right. And often, oftentimes, that is the case. You, you read a review, and this is actually the first yeah, time I, yeah. I've heard this album in a really long time, and I found out a couple things tonight that I didn't know, and I forgot about. I forgot that I actually had their first album. I said, "What's this?" <laughs> <laughs> I found it in your CD book. I'm like, I don't even remember this. I don't. I'm looking at the songs. I'm like, I don't. I couldn't tell you what these songs sound like anymore. Um. 
And I didn't realize until tonight, me and him were talking, you know, one of the, the guitarist Casper, uh, Casper, what's her name? Mozilla. Rosella, Mozella. Uh, let's see. Casper. Yeah, Mazola. She she was a female guitarist and she did some singing on this album too. So she sounds up to me a lot like Brody also because yeah, she, she I always thought it, everything was Brody. Right. Yeah, she was kicked like right when the album was released. She's credited on the album and she sings on the song and plays on it. But like they did no like she was not involved in the touring of this album. Right. Just before. So there are some videos of them playing these songs with her but it's like right before it came out so it's like it's like mixed into their set it, it was like a weird like in between time her uh it said too i her dad was uh, i guess one of the band members or the front man or something of the band sponge okay and that's all pretty much on her that there is i mean for the most part i mean she had a, a drug problem and she got kicked out of the band because brody had a drug and drinking problem too yeah hers is real bad and i think that's another reason why they kicked her out because uh tim anytime they did any shows from what i heard i think it might have been on that podcast or somewhere i heard it somewhere but anytime she did any shows there was absolutely no drinking no drugs allowed to help keep Brody straight. Yeah, because she had a bad heroin addiction. Both of them did. And having her in the van, like, fueled it for her. So it's like, you got to cut her out. Right. Because, like I said, I never realized there was another female. Because in the album... It's only credited as Casper. That could be, uh, you know, a unisex name, I guess. Yeah. Wasn't there, there was another. Because all the videos, they're all dude. You know, it's a three piece. Right. Um, Kim Chi. Wasn't, wasn't that a, a, a female as well? Yeah, she was the bass player on the first album. Yeah. And they had another drummer. His name was Matt something. Matt Young, he played drums on the first one, which is impossible to look up Kim Chi because get something different. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think the the bass and drums was a very good replacement because it's pretty subpar in the first album. Uh, yeah, and Ryan and Andy are really good players. Plus the and uh, Ryan, the bass player, once album was released, he was only playing bass for a year, which is crazy because that first track. It's your typical punk rock <laughs> story, right there. Yeah. You know the Misfits, the Ramones. Yeah, Jerry got his <laughs> bass when they started. Um. Yeah, the uh, Andy, the the drummer, he's he's a pretty big dude, and he's. And there's nothing flamboyant about about his kid either. It's it's just a plain, yeah, you know, three or four piece kit, and he's he's back know. here just plain Jane. Yeah, <laughs> I respect drummers that have a plain old little kit. You know, I was watching. A... I think it's cringy when people have like yeah. 102 piece kits. Like you're not even going to use any of these. I watched the uh... unless you're Neil Peart. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I watched a uh, a short and it had uh, Travis Barker in it, and Adam with his girl, his wife, whatever, and walks up to stage. His kit, I'm like, holy cow, he's got a tiny kit, you know? Yeah. I think he had a snare in front of him, a tom, a bass, and then I think he had another snare to the left, like where your hi hat or something like. But it was on the ground, you know, I mean, like a regular snare setup which it had like without the what do you call them the, the shakers 
Yeah. So it would it would give that ping, you know, ping, ping. And that was it. And a, you know, a couple symbols and whatnot, and that was it. Very simple. Yeah. And what he's able to what what he's able to do with that kit is yeah, it's incredible. I, I I definitely respect the drummer that can make a lot of something out of a minimal kit. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Andy's a very talented drummer. He's real good on this album. It was only recorded in a week. So very, very short period of time, uh, which is, I think that's stellar because, because what they produced, you know, to, to only, to only put a week into it and, and have it come out as well as it did. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's especially now because well, let's face it, uh, short, short time recordings does, don't happen that often anymore. Um, you can take like half a decade to release their next album. Right. Um, it says uh, production was rushed as the band was supposed to have the album completed within two weeks. Uh, however, after their engineer disappeared, uh, as previously stated, um, during the recording sessions, the band was forced to rush the album to meet deadlines. Following its completion, Epitaph delayed its release for nine months. So that, that's kind of fucked up in itself. Um, you know, when you when you rush it to get it out there and then the the, the, the label, the distribution yeah. label says, hey, yeah, we're not going to we're not going to release this yet. Um, it's like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> At the same time, I mean, even if they had more time, I mean, to me, I think it's a fantastic uh, recorded album produced album I, I you know i just i don't know what else what else i would do to make it better personally because it's it has it has the punk sound it's raw it's gritty it's, it's fast. fast yeah but also that's, it, that's what i liked about it it's, and it's the, got the it's got that punk aggression to it you know yeah yeah, yeah. i mean i wouldn't i don't know what another week or two or three or a month would have would have done that they didn't do already mm -hmm. it, yeah it might have made it worse oh, yeah um, it could have been over yeah overproduced um, like Nick. oh or or i mean a lot of the you know the newer rancid stuff i think is even sounds a little overproduced i think you know maybe it would have sounded more like a rancid album They're, uh, this album is a lot more polished than their first one, though. Because their first one... Like I said, I don't, remember, I don't remember anything off their first. It's been so long since I heard it, I forgot I even had it. It's it's what, it, well, it's what uh, a bunch of 18-year-olds put making a punk album for the first time sounds like. Yeah. Like it's, it's very, very raw. It's, and then Coral Fane, the album after this, is when they... They sold out. They kind of... They got they kind of got big, you know. Yeah, because they were still playing small clubs when the sound came out. And I think maybe if they would have had that extra time, this one could have been a Coral Fang, you know. Don't get me wrong, I love Coral Fang. It's a great album, but I, you know, I, I think it it takes away from some of the punk yeah, it's not as that you hear in this bit. album, for sure. Yeah, I also remember hearing something about um, Irene something. The Brody talking about her writing and stepping up from the first one. Because she said something about uh, like a review on the first one. And the dude bashed the album. I'm like, these lyrics don't even make sense. Like, this isn't even a word. Like, so she really took that to heart and started, I guess, writing better for this album. Mm -hmm. She brought up the the track. I forget which one it was. Um, red Carpet Rebellion, which was a song she wrote about a red carpet and then tied it to the Russian Revolution. That was yeah from the first album. Okay. Just about just a, a red carpet and then 
tied it to a Russian Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm all over the place. Yeah, and of course, you know, there was a there was a lot of speculation that Tim was writing the songs for her. Yeah. Which I wouldn't see because I feel like these songs are written better than some rancid songs. It's distinct be, enough that it could be it, debatable. Tell them apart. Because I mean, I like I like Tim and Lars writing. Yeah, they're good writers, but it's very distinct. Yeah, it stands apart from those. Um, yeah, that uh, that's something that, that was brought up about Coral Fang is because um, it was post. Uh, her marriage was that uh, that was kind of there was not necessarily proven proven people wrong on in that aspect because it was you know she, she was still writing writing the music for it um, but they were obviously not together anymore um, right. and I think Rancid came out with uh, let the dominoes fall after around you know the same time and. I'll, every time I hear her fall back down, I always think Tim singing about Brody and their their uh, divorce. Yeah. Also, the the give him the boot uh, compilation compilation mixtape thing that Hellcat put out. Um, the first track was "Sick of It All" off this album. And you know what? I might have. I don't even know. I'm, I'm speculating at this point where I heard them first. You know, I don't. I can't remember if it. It could have been to give them the boot, but I think I got give them the boot after I've already had this album. Yeah. But I fell in love with this album when I first heard that first song. You know. It's definitely good. And it's, I would say it's still one of my top favorite albums, punk albums. For, for as big as this band was, like when, because uh, Coral Fame made the charts at the top 50 or top 100. Um, but for as big as they were, they're like almost like forgotten. Like no one brings them up ever, which is well, I mean, odd. They broke up for a while or. Yeah, but so, so when you, when you're not Sex around, Pistols put out one album. Well, that was different. Yeah, but still, they went on hi, on a hiatus for a really yeah. long time, and people forgot about them, you know. Which is understandable if you're not in the limelight. People yeah. don't see or hear you. Except the negative stuff that's been going the past year or so with her divorce with Josh. Yeah. That's been pretty nasty. I haven't really dug deep into all that, but that that one ended up worse than, than Tim, her and Tim, I think. <laughs> Cause you know, kids and stuff was involved. Yeah. But um, um We wanna we wanna talk about the, the album cover. Yeah, I could uh, not find anything out. Yeah, I, I I tried to look too, and I all all we seen was that the album was the artwork on the album all was created by Brody. Yeah. Um. Which I I thought they were, because I was just trying to figure out what the heck they could be. So I I see at first you would think you know they're they're like I thought they were inmates at first. Yeah, that's what I figured. You know, inmates. You, it's like watching, you know, Johnny Cash perform. You know, you got the inmates watching a yeah. show or something. But I don't think there was no shows going on at the old Sing Sing prison. No, <laughs> and it, it 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 almost it kind of reminds me. Have you ever seen it in 1984? No. That, there there's a scene where they're they're all um, gathered and they're they're watching that. Uh, the government on the big screen. Oh and yeah, I know what you're they, talking they, about. They, they get that moment to to espouse their their anger or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's false anger. 
That's kind of what that reminds me of. I was looking at this guy and I'm like, man, that kind of looks like that kind of looks like John Wayne Gacy. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, well, maybe these are like real criminals, but you know, like in a collage. Right. But I mean, they're all wearing kind of like the same the same shirt yeah. and shirts, you know, which that that doesn't look like a dang prison prison shirt or any kind no. with any kind of. So I don't know. You know, it'd be great to, to know, you know, what this is all about. Uh, yeah, that, that 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 photo is freaking that's pretty sweet. And I this like is, you know, the typical Tim Armstrong, black and white silhouette, everything. Yeah, which I like, you know, I like it. You know, it to it's me simple. that that's punk rock. It's simple. It's cheap. You know, you ain't adding print paying for color or. But uh, I, I like the cover, and um, I like actually, I like. Yes, I like that. Yep, pretty freaking dope. And I actually seen um, just trying to find something on the cover that uh, the AP website they named uh, this was number twenty on the top fifty iconic alternative albums from the two thousands. Nice on the uh, AP magazine, which it's, it's simple, but it's, it's catchy. When you see it, you know what it is, you know? Right. This is the poster from the Give Them the Boot CD. Uh, come on. Oh, I love it. And it's got... Yeah, that was the uh, give them. This was the give them the boot album I yeah, bought. All the tracks and stuff on the back. And bands and goodness. Yeah, and I have to pin this back up. <laughs> yeah, he had that hanging. He has that hanging on his wall. What's up, Biggie? But yeah, uh, that's really all I could find on the album or anything. You know, is the AP website. Gave it number 20 on uh, Iconic Alternative Album Art for the 2000s. This, uh, tracks on this didn't make the charts. The the two singles. Which is weird. I mean, like I said, I know The Crazy Young Peeling was a video on MTV. I mean, because I'm pretty sure that was how I found it. So uh, for it to be on MTV and not get anywhere was uh, kind of impressive to me. But City of Angels, I think I've seen that video a couple times on MTV, but it wasn't as played as much as the, the Young Craze Peeling at the time. And the chart, it got on the Billboard Independent, top independent albums, it peaked at 29. 29, yeah. Yeah, I... I, I... I like that young young craze feeling. It's a, it's almost like a biopic. Yeah. On on herself, it's the the whole. You know, my name's Brody. I'm like, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's one. That, it's one that catches. It's a hook that catches in your. It head. is. It is, and it's a simple hook. I mean, I I definitely dig dig that song a lot. Still ain't tired of that one. Yeah, that and uh, I understand it's kind of like a biopic as well about her heroin addiction. <laughs> but I mean, I love this album. Yeah, favorite favorite song. Love this album. Um. It's toss up. I mean, City of Angels is so good. It is good. Um, I really like I Am a Revenant. That one, I I was listening to it earlier when I was working in, in the man cave. <laughs> and I was like, I was freaking jamming out to it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the 
the self-titled Sing Sing Death House. That's probably my favorite off this one. Hmm. That and I really like Hate Me. Yeah, I I I like the Young Craze Peeling and you know my other one I really really like, which is kind of like it 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 almost like is different from everything else on the album, and it's Lordy Lordy. That's a nice closer. Yes, there there is something about that song that I really like. I don't know. It's like the upbeat man. It has a. I don't know. I mean, it reminds me. Of, how would you describe like Louie Louie Black Flag kinda, <laughs> like the ending song? It just has a, a nice little upbeat. I don't know. I, I like Lottie Lottie. Yeah, I did too. Um, but the the three individuals on that podcast, however, did not. No. <laughs> they didn't. Else? They didn't feel that it it belonged on the album. I'm like. It's a good Whatever. <laughs> Great. It's definitely, I, to me, I, it definitely is in the perfect spot on the album because, mm. you know. It was written as the ender. It's a little slower, upbeat. I wouldn't necessarily say poppier. I also I got mean, like the, the, the crowd cheering at the beginning of the song. Like it was almost like a live thing. I dig it. Um. I, the, the ones that I didn't really care for were a couple of the short ones. But it, I like the short ones the best. <laughs> the the one I can't remember the one, but it's it just sounds like everything is overlapping everything else, and it just sounds like I don't know. It sounds annoying to me. <laughs> you probably hate me. That's the shortest one. Minute Maybe it's because I'm old. <laughs> Hate Me is a minute 10. Bull in the Bull's Eye is a minute 12. And I understand, or Desperate is a minute 22. A lot of short ones. A little short ones. But all the other, most of the other ones are around the three minute or yeah. just over. Which, I mean, like I said, that, that, that attitude, that that quick song, you know. That's that's punk rock, baby. Yeah, from, from was, <laughs> a lot of her influences were uh, early street punk bands like GBH and and uh, crust bands like Discharge and um, Disrupt. So she was she was big in the crust crust punk. And we didn't mention it. That I don't know if we mentioned or not, but she is she's from Australia. Yes. I don't know if we, don't know if we mentioned that or not. No. And she uh, she moved over oh, here when to basically get with Tim, marry Tim, or which you wouldn't know listening to her interviews or anything. She doesn't really have a no, down, she's, under, down under accent, you know. It's, yeah, it's almost like she like lost her accent. Yeah, she's got more of a SoCal. Yeah type thing been in california for over 20 years yeah 25 years but that's that's about it man this on was this album short album oh short video. Hey, oh real quick uh cool little fun fact i found for the uh sing sing prison terminology that had been cre created there that we may know and have heard of prison terminology up the river, uh, the big house, and the last mile. Those uh, phrases were created at the Sing Sing house. Yeah. Also, huh. while, while we're on that topic, the death house, which from like the mid 1800s, like 1963 or something. 1860. Yeah. Or it, the late 18 something to 1963. Yeah. It, the, it executed the, the execution chair. 614 people, I think. It was more than that. It was like 640 or mm -hmm. something. It was almost 700, which the song um, Sing Sing Death House is basically about the execution chair. Wow, that was built in 1826. 
from, from what I heard, it, it was the first maximum security prison in the U.S. That's amazing. Might even be the first one, period. I kind of did a quick little read through and, you know, they talked about the electric chair. You know, Thomas Edison had created the uh, electric chair. So I don't know if that was. Don't quote me that it, I don't know if it was the first prison to have the electric chair or not. It might have been, I think. it. But I mean, it very well could have been considering where it was at and uh, the harshness of the prison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hold on. I, I saw a picture of one of the cells it was crazy. Oh, yeah. He found the picture of one of the cells. Holy I'm cow! A closet. It it was it was like a closet. It was literally like four foot by six foot. It was probably smaller than that. Oh, let me see if I can find it. Um, it was insane to to live like that. It was like literally you just had enough room to sit up on your concrete bunk. If you can see that. Come on. That's the whole cell. That's crazy. They're focused. So you like barely have anywhere to move at all. Your desk comes down, that's it. <laughs> your your, no your stationary ball. desk. There's no twirl in that. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was no. prob probably a damn pot. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, the, the, the name is derived from a Native American tribe. The Sint Sink. Some of the pictures of the execution chair are just so ominous looking. Yeah, look at this one. Where's the freaking... Damn it. There we go. Look at that. That's so creepy. Just this chair. That's a, this empty room. That's a big room for that small chair. Yeah, you can imagine how many people seen that for the last time. That mm -hmm. room. But yeah, man, it's uh that actually has uh made me want to go in and read more about this prison actually because I mean I've heard of it, but I didn't know anything about it and I don't think it's still in use. I think no. it's long gone. It went, it's like a museum now. Yeah, it went out of use in the sixties. Like Alcatraz. Which was around the same time. Um that was around the 60s. Yeah. This says the status is active. Does it? There is a museum. Well, they had a football team. <laughs> Jeez. Notable inmates. Nobody. Oh, Robert Birnbaum. That one's creepy. Elmer Burke. Louis Capone. And my brother Louis. Albert Fish. Oh, serial killer. Yep. Um, 600, yeah, 614. Men and women dying in electric chairs. Sing Sang. Since uh, 1914, all executions in New York City um, were done there. Execution at Sing Sing Prison occurred August 15, 1963. With it being, it says it's 30 miles north of New York on the east bank of the Hudson River. I guess hence the phrase, up the river. Hmm. Hans Schmidt, who was a priest, the only Roman Catholic priest ever executed in the United States. Oh, oh also... Sing Sing Prison was the first prison to use the white, the the black and white striped uniforms. That was Sing Sing Prison. The birth of the Hamburglar. The Hamburglar. <laughs> yes. Hamburglar did some time in Sing Sing. <laughs> Jeez. He, he wouldn't gladly pay you for a hamburger today tomorrow. How's it go? How's it go? No I'd gladly pay you for a hamburger today for a hamburger tomorrow or something. The wimpy burger. Yes, wimpy. 
hamburger, just take it. Sing, sing. But I guess that's it, yeah? All right. On the album? I'm surprised we made it this far. Yeah. With the information that this did not have on the internet. You can get the whole Wikipedia article tattooed on your big toe. <laughs> <laughs> so this was this was our third album uh for this season uh that lets us with seven we're flying right through yeah i picked this one too so that's pretty nice yeah, to do this, this one so what do we got next donnie I have to take it easy on you guys and let one of y'all's come up. All right. Here we go. Rock and roll. Oh, oh hello. Goes there. <laughs> two for two. Oh, back to back. Someone's going to look at me. Somebody in the background was happy. Did you hear that guy holler? It was me. Heck yeah. All right. So two weeks, uh, Milo goes to college by the descendants, yes. correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That one, that one I gotta, I gotta do digitally because mm -hmm. the, it's uh, really hard to track down. It's yeah. I, not, not cheap. There, there was there was one on Amazon for like hundred and sixty dollars. I was like, ah, uh, no. <laughs> well, I don't understand why they won't do a repress of it. They've repressed all the other albums they've done. I it's guess a, we'll talk about and it. And it's not this is a small album. This album is very popular. Yeah. Well, that, that that cover is everywhere. Thought, it's on yeah. T-shirts everywhere. Yeah, the the no, you, 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 I'm not spoiling you, anything. You, I'm just saying you, the drummer, um, I think this band formed in 1976. The drummer drummed for Black Flag, from My War to In My Head. He did all those albums. So that like was four or uh, five, like 80, five, 84 to 88. What's his name? Bill. Bill Stevenson. Bill Stevenson. Yeah. Yeah, this is his band. He's 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 the, which is weird. The drummer is the the leader of the band. Usually, isn't a common occurrence. You're saying too much. I'm not saying too much. Just saying. Save it for next time. Tune in next time. All right. Two weeks. Same time. Same, same channel. Channel. Same peoples. <laughs> uh i want to thank everybody who popped in um and said hello uh, perry dropped by it's always good to see you perry uh, switchblade hooligan uh somebody somebody I've, I've just been recently introduced to um captain ahoy mate uh biggie shack and brian lcs uh thank you Thank you, everybody guys. who catches this on the rewind. Um, check this album out. Fantastic freaking album. Um, I was I was glad uh, that I that it finally showed up for one. Yeah. Uh, but I was also glad that I liked the album. <laughs> um, Good. I'm glad you liked it because I was because uh, because Amazon made me wait. Um, but uh um thank you to to jim and boat for uh for holding holding the fort down uh help me out with this one since it's uh an introduction to the um, the album for me um and uh um thank you to uh little boat for uh for picking the album for one yeah. and uh thank you to raul for uh being here in spirit being here in spirit um hope you uh hope you get well soon brother um and uh that's it um 
this was uh, the distillers Sing Sing Death House. Uh, two weeks from now, Descendants, Milo goes to college. Uh, in the meantime, get out there and listen to some music. Thank you. Peace.